Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the um, school board meeting on October 12, 2010. Will you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alan, are there any adjustments to the agenda? Yes, I do have some. What I did was I tried to type them up so they'd be easier to follow. Okay. What I do have uh, from my office, I don't know, there may be other adjustments as well. Uh, B on the agenda under new business which is a consideration for the tour of England by Lisa Melanson. She contacted me today and asked me to take it off the agenda at this point in time. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if she's planning to bring it up later or not, but I did take it off. I did add an E, and that is consideration to approve two job descriptions from the Human uh, Resources Committee. I do have those job descri descriptions here, but pass them over as we discuss them. And then the second one is for consideration to approve the MSBA resolutions for Dave Hillman. And that's just the way I did it. You can, we can reword it accordingly when we get there. But I did note resolutions which were attached, but I do have extra copies for you. And I also do have a new one that David had asked me to have tonight. So I'll pass those out when you get ready to do right. that. Those were the adjustments that I had at this point in time. Thank you. Okay, are there any comments from the public on agenda items? Seeing none. Comments by student representatives. Middle school. <laughs> Obviously, we've been athletic tonight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Brett Lennon. And I'm Kate Bosworth. We are um, representatives in the middle school student council. As fall sports come to an end, I think we can all agree that we have pulled off yet another successful sports season at the middle school. Between tennis, Boys girls soccer, field hockey, football, and cross country, there was 185 kids that have um, participated in the middle school fall sports season. Um, the last event is taking place on October 28th. Also on October 28th is the first middle school dance. Any donations from parents are extremely helpful, things such as bottled water and packaged candy and food. The official end of the first trimester is on November 30th. Printed report cards will not be sent home with your kids this time. You may access their final grades on PowerSchool Portal, and there's a link for that on the middle school webpage. For all parents, we would really appreciate it if you could monitor what your kids were at the door in the morning. The staff are getting stricter on the dress code this year, and you can find a written copy of that on the student handbook, which is a link on the middle school website. Um, one other reminder is that everyone should check out the middle school blog because there's no longer the newsletter. Um, that's because it wastes paper to print them out when everyone has access to it electronically. And the blog, which is the middle school homepage, has a plethora of upcoming events and activities. Um, another re reminder is that there's an early release October 28th, the night of the dance, and there's no school Friday the 29th due to conferences which kids must attend. Um, <clears throat> last week every grade took kneecap testing and today and tomorrow 5th and 8th grade are taking the um, writing, writing portion of the kneecaps which me measures our writing improvement in the four years we're here at middle school. And I asked a few kids about if they took testing seriously, and most said yes, but a few said not so much. And I think we should try to improve the effort on those kids who said not so much. So um, thank you for letting us speak tonight, and are there any questions? Can I, I'd just like to compliment you on your voices. You are very clear and concise. My secretary will be thrilled when she does the minutes, but also it helps us a lot. Thank you very much for doing Thank that. You. Very good report. High school? Um, yeah, begin. Spirit Week wrapped up a couple weeks ago. Um, overall, that was a pretty good success. I don't know if anyone was able to tour the halls, but um, a lot of impressive artistic talent out there. A um, couple short weeks. 
uh, special events the next couple weeks. Obviously, Columbus Day. Um, tomorrow, sophomores and juniors take the PSATs, and then teacher conferences the 28th and 29th. And then the high school quarter wraps up that week of conferences. So kids will definitely be looking to finish strong. Um, athletics are in full swing as uh, teams are preparing for the upcoming playoff season. Um, students, I feel, are starting to get a little bit more acclimated to the school since the beginning of the, sc um, beginning of the school year. And I think that can be accurately represented by the kind of the bustling in the study halls and the Achievement Center, which has kind of made a transformation since last year, especially um, adding several math tutors and um, additional English tutors, which have been really substantial in uh, creating more educational atmosphere. Any question for the high school? Thank Thanks, you. guys. Thank you very much. Okay, I need to move back because apparently I skipped approval of the school board minutes. I apologize. Um, do I have a motion? <clears throat> do you have any? No, uh, we don't. I, I, I don't either. Minutes. I just went to look for them and couldn't uh -uh. find them. So I don't know what hey. happened. Maybe that's why you skipped. That would you probably be happen. why I skipped it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty smart skipping there. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Kathy. Uh, <clears throat> all right, so you know what? We're going to not approve the minutes since we don't have them, and we'll have that on our um, November agenda. Okay, moving on to recognition. Uh, Jeff, do the national merit. Yes, please, Jeff. Okay. That thing's all jumbled up. It's appropriate to give these recognitions today, which is the eve of the PSATs that sophomores and juniors are taking this year, uh, taking tomorrow. Um, because the national merit competition is all based on PSAT results that students take in the junior year. Um, they take it, students take it twice. Uh, they take it in, in sophomore year and they take it in junior year. Uh, the junior year results are the ones that count for purposes of this, this uh, program. So we actually have a lot of, uh, I, think, I think this is a record number, at least since I've been at the high school, of students who have been either recognized as commended students or semi-finalists. Uh, basically, commended students are students who are within the top 1 to 5 percent of students nationwide, and uh, on the PSAT results, and students who are semi-finalists are within the top 1 percent. Uh, so commended students, and these are all seniors this year, uh, in the National Merit Program are Abby Armstrong, Kelsey Barton, Lydia Berman, Alex Diaz, Peter Govanale, Emily Tainter, and Hannah Wallace. Those are commended students, the semifinalists, um, who go on in the competition to compete for various scholarship opportunities uh, within this program. Uh, the semifinalists are Will Bolenbeck, Will Daly, Lucy Hewitt, Rob McDonald, Matt McClavick, Jack Queenie, and Ben Richardson. So congratulations to all those students and their families. That's a great number. Jeff, you can stay right there. Because <clears throat> unless there's any questions. I just want to congratulate Matt. Yep. Yes. Well, great, great and, and Mom Hewitt. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, great. Congratulations, everyone. That's really outstanding. Um, under communications, we have high school, the NEASC accreditation. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, we got a letter um, dated September 21st um, from NEASC, which is, our, which is the New England Association of Schools and Colleges, uh, which is the accreditation agency for all the public high schools and public colleges, by the way, uh, well, public and private colleges um, throughout New England. And the secondary schools division is the part of uh, commission, is the part of NIESC, which is responsible for making accreditation decisions concerning high schools. Uh, so the letter on September 21st essentially says, um, gives their blessing to our five-year progress report, which we submitted last spring, um, continues our accreditation. Um, and not unusually, um, asks, they virtually always ask for some additional special progress report about something. 
Um, and the special progress report that I've got to submit in February 1st is within the letter. It basically has to do with um, how are we following through with making the academic expectations identified in our mission, sort of living and breathing uh, within the high school. There's one about the school nurse position. There's about our advocate program and a couple of other things as well. So I, I was actually I'm happy that we, we got that. Um, um, we've talked a little bit about NIESC in the past and that process and the value of it, and it's still one that I think a lot of folks are up in the air about, but um, overall I'm pleased certainly to have that, that stamp of approval. If there's any questions, I can answer any questions. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Great. I think I probably should say congratulations. Yes. <laughs> you and I have had a lot of discussions. Yes. <laughs> okay, next is um, ASOP. Um, I'm going to have Gary Illinois is going to speak briefly about ESOP as B, C, the K through 12 phone notification system. And since we have him on the floor, we'll also have him do I, which is a quick update on technology. Okay. ASOP is a, it's a new software service that we contracted with this, this year that is, it's absent rec recording and it's a, it also does subcalling. So when teachers call in, uh, either call in or go online and put an absence in there, the system will know these are approved subs and start making calls and fill those. We've eliminated some uh, sub callers, so that that's kind of automating the system. It's also a place where we've got, we finally will have a data source where we'll have good records for attendance for our staff. And we're using it not only for sub calling, but we're using attendance for all staff. Um, bus drivers, custodians, technology staff, everybody's part of the whole system. Uh, it's involved a lot of training, a lot of setup, and um, I think it's working okay. Um, the schools seems to be, um, most of them seem to be happy. I mean, some of the emergency things that happened in the past when you didn't have a sub are gonna happen with technology too. And you just scramble and you find a sub. But for the most part, it's taking care of the system. Uh, the, the, pre-K-12 notification system. We're just really getting off the ground now, but it's a, it's a calling system for just regular notices and for emergencies. It'll be used for you know, storm, storm day cancellations or if we happen to have some kind of a, a large emergency. Information can get out to parents through emails, through calling, through text messaging, through the system. Parents will have to go in and set up some of that piece of it. We've got the basic data in there, but the rest of it will still need to be placed into the system. So there's two big pieces of software um, that, we've, that we're initiating this year. And then this, if we go down to I and we talk about the technology update, <clears throat> a major change we did this year was move to, uh, we've been moving towards Google Apps for Education, and we were changing our email system. We also changed our teacher websites. Um, that was no small feat. Um, we're still in, in process in, in some cases, but I think it's gone fairly well. And it's a, it's a system that kind of goes along with our technology plan, where instead of us um, trying to host and maintain servers on site, we're pushing some of this and outsourcing it. So, and Google's no small company, so they should be able to handle uh, our district. Uh, along with all of those things that we had going on, some other technology initiatives, we had the standard thing where we get out all 7th and 8th grade laptops to students. That's 294 laptops in the hands of kids. We re-image all of the staff laptops. That's about 50 per building. So there's 150 laptops there that we deal with. We had um, we have a trouble ticket system. And we reached a record of 548 tickets in the month of September. So we had a busy September. We're still you know, trying to catch up a little bit, but we're getting there. Major hardware upgrades this year. Um, we had upgraded some of the central core switches, some new servers, and we're experimenting with virtualization, where we've got one great big server that, that has uh, other servers on it, which will hopefully allow us, we have backup systems, but failover system. So if one server goes down, then we can mirror it to another one. So we're working towards those kinds of systems. Uh, thanks to the CEF and to the Ponco Parents Association, we have smart boards in all classrooms, grades one through four. So every single, single uh, classroom teacher in grades one through four has a mounted projector and a smart board in their room. 
We'd like to do that in other schools too, and we're, we're getting there, we're working towards it, uh, but we're not there yet. We instituted a comprehensive contract for all of our printers to bring service and supplies all under one umbrella. Uh, so that's uh, working with, you know, some initial startup glitches just like we normally can. Professional development. The tech integrators have been very busy this month, especially with the new software initiatives. Um, we ran at, at Cape Academy. Uh, I think it was a very successful. We usually run a week-long summer academy the second week of August. We had 63 Cape attendees and 24 from South Portland. Let's kind of share the, that. So I, I was thinking that uh, it, attendance was up a little bit, probably because of some of our major changes brought some people in. Um, but it was good. We had a lot of good people there and a lot of good sessions. We've been, the Tech Integrators and myself have been doing things during the month of September. We did a Tech Tuesday. In other words, right after school, we'd go to one school uh, on one week, another school on another week, rotated between the three schools, and we were just there for an hour or so to help staff with any kind of technology issues. And uh, we brought everybody in full force, and it seemed to work well. We had quite a crowd in, in a couple of them. In October, our focus has been on another piece of software that we purchased for the district called Land School. Land School allows teachers to monitor what's on the laptops so they can look at the piece of software on their laptop and see the 20 or so kids in their classroom. Uh, not only can they monitor, but they can use it as a teaching tool. They can, it's, a, it's kind of a primitive student response system, so they could put up one question and the kids in the class could vote on that, or you could even develop a, a full, you know, 100 question quiz with that. So we're doing training on that in the month of October in um, middle school and high school. Um, Actum is the state association for technology educators. I've been past president of that. I'm chairing the conference. This week is the conference. We have a good contingent from Cape going. And um, you probably have already heard that we had um, Karen Abbott, first grade teacher at Pond Cove, is a, a teacher of the year for Actum, which not only gives her some cash awards, but it brings some cash to Pond Cove School to spend on technology. Um, would like to give you, would like the opportunity at some point in time, maybe in a, in a workshop, to give a more detailed report. We haven't done that for a while, kind of like what instructional support did um, the last time you, you had a, a Tuesday workshop. So um, hopefully you can get us on the agenda at some point between now and the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Gary, just one thing I would ask you. I, on AF student social security number collection, I'm going to speak about that briefly, but since you're on your feet, uh, okay. do you know how many responses we have had so far or with social security numbers? I don't, because it's handled, that's handled by the school. Okay. But we have, I mean, we, we made a decision to don't urge all social security numbers from power school. Um, so that those aren't going, going to be upgraded to the state and we'll keep records of those that have said yes, but I think Probably the majority of people are saying that. Okay. I guess. Okay. And I'll speak more about it, but I just thought while I have you there, I check on numbers. Thank you, uh, David. I, I just want to give Gary a compliment. I, I've heard from several uh, teachers slash, uh, and what they call administrators, about the Google Docs, for lack of a better word, Google Docs project, and they are very enthusiastic. They find it easy to use. They found the tech integrators to be extremely helpful in terms of designing their own websites. And they, once I talked, came out of their way to tell me what a great job your group was doing and how easier they thought the whole thing was. Great. So. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Gary. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Alan, uh, yes. next, vaccinations. Vaccinations. As you know, I have mentioned this several times during the summer, uh, during the spring and the summer, as far as what we would do around vaccinations. Uh, well, there was some information from the federal government about doing vaccinations, like we did last year. Uh, I think the last time I talked to you, I was still waiting to hear back from Dr. Dora Mills, who is the main CDC uh, person, and also from the national CDC. What I found out uh, recently is that they, neither the Maine nor the National CDC is going to have money to, to assist us in this process. Uh, I've looked at the process very carefully. I've looked at the funding and what it takes away for time for our students. And I look at this year as not being an emergency year. Last year was an emergency year. We had, uh, uh, we had to be very concerned about that. After looking at all of those, those pieces to the puzzle, 
Uh, I am presenting to you tonight our probability that we will not do students. We know that the vaccination is readily available in doctor's offices. We also know it doesn't take the same number as it has in the past. Uh, we also know it's available at uh, local uh, drug stores, et cetera. So it's pretty well available. So my, my issue is I am not anxious to start the vaccination clinic as a year-to-year -year process. And so without the uh, income that we'd expected, I don't think it's necessary. We have done what we have done traditionally forever, and we have set up an adult clinic, which will be on Tuesday, November 9th at 2.30 at the Pond Cove Middle School Cafetorium. That has been there for years. Uh, it is for staff as well as uh, adults, and they can bring their insurance numbers in, and it will be taken care of accordingly. So that will occur. But uh, I've told the nurses that I did not feel comfortable in giving them a final decision until I talk with the board tonight, but my recommendation to the board uh, is that we do not do a vaccination clinic for our students this year. Thank you. Uh, do any board members want to express a different opinion of that? Okay, then I assume okay. that Agree. we can mm -hmm. an, yeah. an agreement. And we will get out uh, information to parents by the end of the week. Yeah. Great. May I just ask one question? The, the non um, the non staff adults who are who can get a vaccination at this clinic are paying for that. They're paying for it or their insurance will cover it. So they bring in their insurance. So it's numbers. available to the public? Yeah. Okay. And it has but been not, but it's not the cost no. isn't covered by the district. No, 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 we don't cover so, yeah. the Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> no, we don't cover the cost. Um, either for our teachers or for them, it is by insurance. Or they oh, okay. Cash. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I'm glad you clarified that. That's an important point. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? All right. Next, facilities office update. update on a couple projects that we have going on, one of them being a boiler replacement project at uh, the high school. Um, to give you a little update of where we sit with that and some history, the existing boilers in there were installed in 1969. Uh, the efficiency of those particular plants are in the 60% range. Uh, so that means 60 cents of every dollar goes into heating our building, 40 cents of every dollar goes in the chimney, lost through the system. So we have a very inefficient system. We're going to be looking at putting in new, a newer system that provides an 85 to 88 percent <coughs> efficiency. So now at 60 cents, we're using 85 to 88 cents of every dollar to heat our schools. Uh, we're in the process right now of interviewing some engineers to design this plant for us. Uh, we've met with one company so far. We're meeting with a second company uh, tomorrow and we'll be making a decision on which engineering firm that we would engage with to do the design for this new heating plant. Um, we've worked on some, some timelines and I think or we've been provided with the timeline that we have which is projected baseline at this point uh, but we are looking to move forward with that in that particular timeline that we have uh, provided and don't foresee any issues with being able to meet all of those timeline areas that we have uh, spelled out. We're also working on lighting, and as you know, the lighting in the schools have been, been updated. So just to give me an idea where we sit on those, the high school has been completed, uh, which, is, which is great. We're going to be seeing some pretty good energy savings. The middle school in Pond Cove are about 99% complete. We have 10 fixtures that we're missing. So if you think of the, the amount of fixtures that are replaced, 10 is not too bad. Uh, but to highlight some of these ideas of, what, of what's happened here, over 10,000 lamps have been replaced in the schools. Um, we've gone from a 32-watt lamp to a 25-watt. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but when you start adding up that there's 10,000 lamps, it's 7 watts, that's 70,000 watts every hour that those are running that we're not paying for now. We're looking at a potential savings of upwards of $40,000 annually for electrical rates for those buildings. That's a pretty substantial amount of energy savings. We're looking at some other projects that will help us 
save more money. Um, occupancy sensors on some of our air conditioning and heating equipment that will only operate it if somebody's there. Um, no re reason to heat a cooler room if nobody's in the room. Um, we've just engaged with a contractor to install what they call VFDs, or variable frequency drives. And what they are is they're a piece of equipment that speeds up or slows down a motor based on a load. How much do you need? Well, there's no reason to run it at full tilt if you don't need that amount of energy being consumed. We're also doing the same thing in the library at the high school. So these are all good energy savings, and it reaps a lot of different rewards, things like greenhouse gas reduction, carbon footprint reductions, and those are all wonderful things. It also puts that extra savings on the bottom line for our electrical bills. Uh, things that we're still looking at, uh, parking lot lighting upgrades. Uh, we're looking at a couple different ways to do that. Uh, one of them is called induction lighting. Another one is LEDs to try to save additional energy. Uh, those are uh, current parking lot lights are, are very dated in their technology and they consume a very large amount of energy. Um, we're looking to upgrade our energy management system to allow for better, tighter control so that we can save more money. Um, we're looking at possibly now controlling Hannaford field lights so that we can control those by a schedule, by use, and do monitoring of that. So that can all save us some money on how we are moving forward. So those are some of the things that we're working on in the facilities department. Great. Any questions? Great. Thank you very much. You're very well. Okay, next is student social security number collection, which yes. we've already touched on briefly. And I'm only going to touch on it briefly. The meeting uh, minutes from September would have reflected the fact that you voted, put a statement on there, uh, not truly not encouraging parents to turn those in. If you watch the news within two weeks after that, you'll know the Department of Education already had a break in that and that all of the social security numbers of all the uh, school employees were released at that point in time inappropriately. So needless to say, I'm very pleased that you made the decision when you did. Uh, I, I think Gary is right. I don't think we've had an enormous number of responses from parents. We did go into our, our uh, uh, power school. Uh, we checked any social security numbers that were in there prior to that. Those have all been wiped off of our school setting. And only now will the new numbers go in if parents or a student over 18 have given permission to do that. And so that's where we are. But I think your decision in September was at the exact right moment, knowing what the news was going to be in the next few, few days afterwards. So I thank you for that. Thank you, Al. Okay, Steve Grant. Mary, would you mind? Um, um, no, I wouldn't mind at all. Um, last week, last Monday and Tuesday evening, um, the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation um, heard from teachers and administrators who have submitted grants. Um, it was very exciting. I attended some of the presentations. In particular, I attended the presentations that had to do with curriculum. I was interested in that. I saw Alan there, and Kate was there as well. Um, there was a lot of enthusiasm around um, the presentations. Um, and um, though um, I did not sit in on the deliberations, there will be a vote um, on October 18th, a formal vote. There were about eight to 10 grants, as I remember it. It was a smaller grant cycle than usual. Um, but on uh, October 18th, the, the winners of those grants will be announced. Um, and I think there was, um, there were several, I can't go into details, but professional development and some curriculum and some um, program enrichment grants and um, technology grants that are being followed up on, I think, um, while the technology, while we're tracking the technology that CIF has already purchased, I think there was a request from CIF that we do um, a more thorough job tracking um, the, their purchases and, and making sure we know where they are and that they're being used. So, um, and that's the update. I'm happy to present um, in November about the, or we'll have someone from CIF come to talk about um, what grants were presented. There were some, I think, very exciting grants and well thought out, so. Great, thank you, Mary. Any questions for Mary? 
Sorry to be so vague, but I have to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Uh, next is Everyday Math Parent Survey. I just would mention again that the Everyday Math Parent Survey is online. Uh, as of today, I think we had had 58 responses. I plan on keeping it open until October 31st or Halloween. Uh, it will be available. Uh, it is online. Uh, we have had a request or two to put them out on paper. We have not done that because we are hoping that those who do not have compu computers will let the principals know so we can do that. However, on the other side of the coin, putting out that enormous number of paper to people. Uh, number one is difficult. Number two, to get the results put into the computer would mean we'd have to have somebody there to do that at all times. So we have not done that. Uh, I have asked the three principals if they would be sure to get several notices out to parents just to remind them that it's there and remind them how easily it can be uh, done at that point in time. I do feel the information we'll get will be very valuable. Uh, I think there's some very in-depth information that is coming out of that. I did show it to the uh, uh, Teaching and Learning Committee the other day, the first round of it, and uh, we'll, we're keeping very close tabs on it, and then we'll put that together as a data document. Probably, uh, if it does finish on October 31st, it'll probably be December, we'll have a complete rundown on the information that it has provided for the math committee and also for teaching. Um, Alan, if there are parents, and I don't, I don't know if there are or not, who um, don't get the newsletter <coughs> online um, or don't have access to a computer, can, um, do we know who, who that might be? Do they request um, paper copies? They do it on both. Okay. Um, about how many, would you say? 10 or 15. Okay. Could, Okay, if so, can, can we provide paper, paper surveys for those families? Okay. And Steve, you said you also? Six. Six, okay. And in backpacks, just for those families. Yep. So we make sure they're covered as well. Definitely. That'd be great. Okay, any other questions? Okay, next is Turfield. Linda. Do you want to start? Alan. I mean, Do you want to start? No, that's, well, the only thing that I'll comment on is that uh, the, I do this wrong every time, the co-curriculum group yes. has been looking at the turf field with some issues around the turf field. And we've had, uh, Greg has joined that group, uh, and we have had two or three meetings on mm -hmm. it. Uh, we still have some more work to do before we have a final presentation uh, to the board. But we are looking at some of the issues that uh, involve the turf field that range all the way from uh, the amount of use, the time of use, uh, some of the damage that has been done down there. I think probably the biggest piece of damage that I was kind of shocked when I fir first heard it was that somebody had hooked either a truck or a car to one of the gates and pulled the gate down. Uh, on the field, so we're very concerned about that. So we are taking a close look, recognizing the fact that our original rules on the turf field were preliminary rules as we got to know and understand the needs of the turf field. And as we look at other turf fields, we find that some keep them open all the time, some keep them locked, and so we're trying to resolve some of those issues and bring them back to the board for review. Right. There is going to be some additional policy probably that will come out of some of these discussions, specifically addressing some of the issues that we've had, also dealing with some of the um, community concerns as far as noise levels during certain periods of time, how to handle the noise better, the possibility of either installation of some type of permanent PA system or something like that that would provide actual better uh, acoustics for uh, the spectators while minimizing the exposure to the neighborhood <laughs> behind them. So the, there are several issues that they're looking at. There are some issues to do with the lighting and how they were installed and possibly adjusting them as well. Um, for the time being, we have gone ahead and we have updated just the use of facilities guidelines that go with the field to address some very specific issues. Um, this is not a policy. It is just the guideline the, and the application for use of the turf field. There are some very minimal um, changes uh, from the fields allocation committee to just the fields committee. They just changed the name. So I'm saying these are, these are so, so minor. Um, and 
also to include Public Works Director into the Fields Committee, uh, since the Public Works Department is also responsible for maintenance of the field as well, Community Services Director. Um, all of the requests, uh, as always, will always go through Community Services, as always before. That was not spelled out in the guidelines before, so we did add that to that. Um, let me see. It, we did take out the portable public address system. What we were finding sometimes is, depending on what the activity it was going on on the field at that time, some of the individuals that were using the public address system were moving it from one side of the field to the other. So again, looking into the possibility of having a permanently installed public address system would take away that potential. These are just parts of the discussions that this committee has been having because we have seen more and more issues starting to arrive, uh, arise from you know, the higher use of the field. Most of these concerns happen, unfortunately, for town events, um, not during the rental periods because we do have very strict enforcement on anybody who rents the field. We want to make this facility available to all of the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. We want to make it accessible to everybody. At the same time, it's a huge investment that this town made into the field and into the bleachers, and we want to retain its value. So it's really important that we make sure that we put together um, the use guidelines for this field for everyone's benefit. So we're going to continue our discussions. Thank you, Linda. Any questions? Okay. Uh, just one comment. Sure. I just somehow want to thank the people that do hear the loudspeaker on the Friday and Saturday football nights and soccer nights who don't have football and soccer. Children or you know, might not be the fans. The citizens, I'm sure, um, have been very patient with us while we've been getting used to the a loudspeaker and the noise. So thank you. Mm -hmm. I should, I should add to that, too, if I may, is that I think uh, Jeff Thorak has been very good uh, working with that. Jeff's, Jeff grew up in that neighborhood, and so he knows a lot of the people in that neighborhood, and he's been working at that very carefully mm -hmm. to make sure it's all there, so I do thank him. The other, the other thing that I'd like to do is oh. I want to remind you that this committee is no longer a committee of the board. It's an mm -hmm. official committee only called when needed. They have been very good because I think we've met two or three times this fall, uh, in, even though they are not a, a standing committee, so that we can do that. So we've been doing 7.30 meetings <laughs> uh, yeah. several times this fall just to take care of some of these issues. So I think it's always important to recognize the work that uh, pe people are doing even when it isn't an official committee. David? Um, I have no idea whether this committee is the appropriate one to consider this issue, but I just wanted to raise it. There's a growing concern about turf-type fields with staph infections because they're a breeding ground for staph. And um, in terms of guidelines, people are still discussing that uh, orth orthopedic surgeons are taking a look at it. Um, there may even be a, uh, some fairly simple solutions like requiring elbow pads and knee pads that block. Um, but I think it's an issue that should be looked at because I know of at least one student that got a staph, allegedly got a staph infection from the field. And I've been told by experts that they're, they're virtually a breeding ground for staph because of the nature of the water and the heat and everything else. Okay. Thank you, David. Um, Linda, so is that document still a work in progress or is it? Yes. Okay. So when you guys are finished, that will come before the board, not for approval, but just for a review and comment. Exactly. Okay. Well, have fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> this this is about the fifth revision on this I document. Can only imagine. And and it is it will be continue to be a living document. As yes, <laughs> I'm sure. As and, there are changes. It may at some point just need to be pushed out, even while you're still working on some other items, just mm -hmm. so you can get that document. Mm -hmm. useful. Um, but thank you for all of your work and all of the committee members' work on that. Um, and I would also echo David's concern, um, mm -hmm. idea about maybe at some point adding to your agenda the issue of the, the staff and maybe just coming up with some sort of a school position or district position. Janet is raising her finger at me. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
In the defense of that scenario, there is currently practices in place. Um, that our field is one of the few fields in the area that is disinfected at least twice a year. Um, our guidelines are there to preserve those kinds of infections from occurring. As soon as any bloodborne pathogens are on the turf field itself, there are strict guidelines as to how that's supposed to be treated immediately. So um, I think the town and the school department has done a great job at trying to meet that. And just in, uh, as a possibility, I heard that the staff infection wasn't from the field, it was from locker rooms, so, um, which is another area that we deal with. Don't say that. So uh, there's all kinds of things there, but just in, in defense of the Public Works Department, they do a great job at keeping that field in good condition. Just so you know, I was not oh. raising a complaint, except that this has become an initial nationwide, and um, I, I think if we could be proactive about it, it would be helpful. I, I, I happen to know we're the only, one of the only schools that disinfects. Other schools don't and our students play on. So it appears that actually Cape Elizabeth has been proactive, um, and that's really good to hear. Perhaps maybe we can do a little bit better job of communicating um, to a wider audience. Maybe uh, a, a Jeff Thora can send, include in some of one of his, or on his website, frankly, probably, a little bit of information about what is being done um, to help maintain our facilities and uh, that might help alleviate that issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Um, we're moving on to new business. I'm stunned. I'm sorry. Uh, item 7A is consideration of proposed World Affairs Council trip to um, the University of Connecticut from Cape Elizabeth High School teacher Gretchen McMulty. Jeff. I only brought one of the two forms that I was that I, that I took out before this meeting um, and left one of them on my desk. But I think I've got the information I need. On Thursday, November 4th, the proposal is to take um, a group of students, it's 20, 21, 22, I think it's still a little bit up in the air, uh, to the University of Connecticut uh, for a model UN conference. Um, students would return on uh, the Saturday right after that. So essentially it means in, on Thursday they don't leave until just 20 minutes before the end of school. So essentially they're here all day Thursday. They miss one day of school on Friday. Um, and there are chaperones appropriate to the number of students that are being proposed. Uh, the cost per student is I think $150. And the document that I left on my desk is the one that has the, the details of the transportation, but I think the board probably actually has that in front of it. So um, that, that is the proposal. And I would urge the board to approve that trip. Thank you, Jeff. Um, we have a motion. Let's see. I um, motion to consider approving the proposed World Affairs Council trip to Yukon Stores, Connecticut from Cape Elizabeth High School teacher Gretchen McNulty. Is there a second? I'll second. Discussion? Questions? All those in favor? 7-0. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, going to 7-C which is the consideration to approve extracurricular and co-curricular staff nominations for 2010-2011. Again, I have the list. I know usually what you ask me to do is just to comment on any that you have questions about at this point in time. I just will note that you have several that are paid for by boosters organizations mm -hmm. uh, on this, but you also have some that are school sponsored. Uh, so I'd be happy to take any questions that you might have. Okay. Can I first have a motion, please? I move that we um, approve the following extra and co-curricular staff nominations for 2010 and 11 as written in the agenda. All right, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Linda. Any questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor? 7-0. Thank you, everyone. Okay, 7D, consideration to approve the nomination of interim superintendent. 
Um, I guess I'll speak to that, Alan. Sure. Okay, uh, so tonight the school board is going to be voting to approve Ken Murphy as Cape's interim superintendent. Um, he served 18 years as Yarmouth superintendent before retiring from the district in 2009. Dr. Murphy brings invaluable experience as Yarmouth's former district leader. He brings with him an acute understanding of state and local issues that affect the teachers and students here in Southern Maine. His breadth of knowledge in these areas will allow the district to continue to move forward even as we take time to search for a permanent uh, superintendent for Cape Elizabeth. Um, so having said that, is there a motion? I'll move that we approve the nomination of Ken Murphy as interim superintendent. And could you add to your motion that you authorize me to sign the contract? And I authorize you to sign the contract. The chair, thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, any uh, questions, discussion? The only thing I'd like to add is um, having talked with members of the Armour School Board and other places, I think we, um, in the town should know, we really lucked out with this interim superintendent. I think it's, it's, a, it's a great choice and it's going to be great for our school system. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor? 7-0. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Okay. Okay. Yes. It's really messy. I just give it to you. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Moving on to 7E. Consideration to approve two job descriptions from the Human Resources Committee. Linda, I have both of them here. Yep. And so the first one that I'll pass out is Library Media Specialist. To you. And the second one that I'll pass to you is the data manager. Okay, Linda, do you want to say anything or do you want to make a motion? Well, I would just like to say that this will bring us right down to the end of all of the co-curricular job descriptions for the district. Um, so I do, I, I would like to thank all of the administrators, Gary and everyone else that's been involved with this project. It has been a long drawn out process to develop job descriptions for every co-curricular position. Um, again, it's going to be a changing things as, as time goes by and as new positions are created. Specifically to these two positions, um, we kept the format uh, the same for these two positions as we have with all of the other positions uh, in the co-curricular field. Um, there, is a, there was just some minor revisions as far as the verbiage under the terms of employment. We are directing the terms of employment to specify the amount of work, uh, either days per year or months per year. Uh, depending on how it's described in the contracts that these particular positions are attached to. Um, based on that, I would like to move that the board approve the job descriptions as submitted by the HR committee for both the data manager and the library media specialist. Thank you, Linda. Is there a second? I second it. Thank you, David. Questions, discussion? Mary? Um, I'd just like to thank Linda for all of her work in overseeing this tremendous um, job of getting these co-curricular job descriptions written that I know was started before I joined the board and you've overseen it um, with your committee, at once personnel and now human resources. So thank you for doing that. Um, I, I would like to just clarify that these actually are uh, regular employee regular. positions. Yes, I'm these sorry. Are regular. I, yeah. I apologize. <laughs> I, I just realized that she said that. I'm sorry. We're sorry about the these are these are regular employment <laughs> positions. Yeah. Uh, okay. Any other questions or discussion? Uh, I would second Mary's. Having been on the committee for a number of months, in, but also have been in possession of the massive book of job descriptions, I would like to compliment Linda and all the people who worked on it. Um, I only had to do a, 
a relatively small amount. And so I can only imagine how much work they put in to do it all. But they had to be congratulated. I would also mention that Kathy uh, was uh, led in the beginning and Linda has taken the yes. yes. And Pauline <laughs> deserves a great amount of gratitude throughout this whole process. Here we are again, Pauline. Thank you. <laughs> I seem to say that a lot. Um, Linda, I just have a, a clarifying question for sure. you. Um, so these job descriptions already exist, and specifically like the professional responsibilities. There's no new changes there? No. What do you mean, no new changes? So, in other words, there. is there already currently a job description that lists information specialist and blah blah blah? Or is no, all these were developed. Written? These are new job descriptions. Okay. Um, I hate to be the stinker, um, but I just saw these um, from the from the committee. Um, I have not had a chance to review the final draft from the committee because mm -hmm. I think you guys met this morning. I, I know you did send it mm -hmm. out the night before, but I wasn't sure if there was going to be changes made today. Um, so I didn't look it over. Um, so based on that, I'm not going to be able to um, approve them tonight. I'm sorry, I'm, unless somebody tells me there's absolute critical need to have these on the books before our meeting in November. Okay, so that's just that's where I stand. Any other um, questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor? All those opposed? 6-1. Six, 6-1? One. Six, one. Yep. I think that's my first ever no vote. <laughs> that's okay. Oh my god. Okay, consideration to approve the MSBA resolutions um, ha, for the school board delegate to the MSBA convention. David, I, I have both the one that was sent to all of you with the samples in it, <clears throat> and then I also have the new one for today. Yes. So I'll send both of those along, so if they don't have them here, you have them so you can look at them? Yes. So these are the sample draft ones that came It came. The it came from the M MSBA, correct. And a new one was developed. So this is the one that has come from uh, Maine uh, School Board <laughs> Association. And then this one, the one-page one, is the one that David had asked us to be sure to have tonight. Yes. Let's review that. And just the one that the, um, the Maine State School Board Association one, had, I think was circulated quite a bit earlier, uh, once by me and once, I think, by Andrea on Friday. The one page one uh, that you have um, perhaps be. How do you want to do it, Rebecca? Do you want me to explain it? Or what uh, no, it? actually, I, I think I'd like to suggest is that you have um, two, two different motions. Uh, well, one second. Okay. Uh, I got, yeah, I, I would say that why don't you have a motion to approve the, the MSBA resolutions as presented? Um, and then the one for the, the um, affordable health insurance resolution as drafted by you, a separate motion. Just so you know, the, the one that was drafted, I, I happened to draft it in my capacity as the, what, what the heck was that thing called? The, the, um, oh, I'm looking at Pauline again. The Health Insurance Review Committee, I helped draft it in conjunction with the, uh, a couple of members of yeah. the Balance Board. It is similar to one of the ones yeah. in this packet, yeah. more direct, so it... Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to uh, offer a different suggestion. Why don't we make a, a motion to approve all of the MSBA resolutions with the exception of the affordable health insurance one? Um, and then you can separately talk about the changes that you made, that were made in this, this one, this resolution, and we can vote to approve that. In, and I would suggest in the second one that... that because they're slightly inconsistent that I'd be given authority to support this one if it fails to then support the one in the okay, pack. Let's deal with one okay. at a time. So would you like to make a motion for the, f the first set of um, resolutions? Um, I would move uh, for authority from the board to support uh, and vote for uh, the resolutions contained in the packet uh, provided by the Maine School Board Association Delegate Assembly for 
voting on at the um, fall convention in uh, materially the substantially, excuse me, in materially the same for, form as presented um, in in our packet. Uh, um, and, and okay, is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, you may want to consider having an amendment to allow you to approve um, any resolutions that are um, changed with um, minor, with, you know what I'm trying to say? Well, that's why you said materially the same did as you say these. That? Yes, I, didn't, I did. I didn't in my motion. that. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Okay, um, discussion about the MSBA mo uh, resolutions. All those in favor? Great, seven zero. Okay, and then a separate resolution for this. Um, I would move, and then I'll explain it. Um, I will move, uh, I move, excuse me, that the board authorize uh, David Hillman and his alternate. I should have said that in the first motion, but uh, whenever you hear David Hillman also, you throw in alternate in case for some reason I don't go. Um, <laughs> for approval of a draft, single page draft resolution in our packet entitled Affordable Health Insurance, which was technically drafted by myself, uh, well, in fact was drafted by myself as a member of the CAPES uh, Health Review Insurance Committee. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mary. Okay. In, in, sub in materially the same forth as set forth in this proposal. The w reason so if I can add that as an amendment to my own motion. The reason, the diff major difference between this, this motion essentially implements or attempts to provide the legal basis for implementing the recommendations of CAPE's Health Insurance Review Committee. Um, it also fleshes out what's attempting to be done in the MSBA's one, but in a, in a more clear fashion. The only material difference is that it doesn't um, shift to a blue ribbon commission all the other possible alternatives other than the main using the main state um, uh, the state of Maine employee insurance. It allows it to be done and voted on as a resolution now rather than bifurcating and sending everything off to a commission. The theory being commissions take a long time and these are some fairly significant savings that could be achieved now. Any uh, questions or comments? I have a question. Uh, so, and how will you introduce this, this, this different draft? Well, having never, never attended one of these before, I asked Rebecca, and I'm not sure how it's going to be done. My understanding is that uh, Falmouth is sending this on as it is, to um, the MSBA to be included and that uh, somebody from Falmouth will raise it from the floor and it will be considered in that fashion but it will be sent ahead of time and if I have a chance I may add a little explanatory, explanatory paragraph like you see in other ones but if not it's going to be put forth by Falmouth and I, in, in that fashion and I will probably if authorized, um, provide oral discussion of and maybe access to a link on our website so they can read our, uh, our committee's report on it. Okay. David, will you remind me who else you worked on this um, committee with? Um, I remember reading your <clears throat> The work that who, who else was on our committee? Yes, with you. Uh, you see, now you're going to make me, force me to forget somebody. Um, well, to we, the best of your memory. Well, actually, I should probably, I can see Pauline thinking, yeah. if she can't even remember everybody. We, we had representatives of the town council. We had Penny Jordan. We had myself. We had um, Pauline was one of our advisors. We had somebody from the union who. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was leaving the best for last, Mary. <laughs> And we had somebody from the uh, union who uh, gave advice. We had Mary Townsend. Uh, we had several citizens' representatives who... Al. Uh, it just, I, I'm terrible on names. Kyle. I'm sorry. It was Al Bartholomew. Was that right? And Kyle, Kyle Parrish. And Kyle Parrish. Right. 
See, people Thank have you. better memories than me. So you had a gr uh, representatives from the committee was town council, town, uh, town council, community school members, board, or the joint board. committee of the town White council and the school board. There as well. Thank you. And we had citizens representatives in, and at my request, we had whatever you want to, whatever Tyler had. He was just sort of an observer, but offered a lot of valuable input, which was Dwight Ely as rep you. representative of the teachers union. Thank you very much. Kathy? I'm not sure I understand who makes the decision. Um, if you look at the MSBA, they talk about a blue ribbon commission made up of major stakeholders, blah, blah, blah. Assuming that those folks uh, make the decision about change in health care, I'm not sure I understand on the draft, your draft, David, um, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing through it, I don't understand who potentially makes the decision to um, make changes or proposals for changes in health insurance. Well, it, it, the difference is my motion doesn't require a blue ribbon commission. It allows the legislature to just to go ahead and make whatever change if, if they were to fall. This is just a suggested resolution. It simply directs the legislature to make the necessary changes. And whatever way the legislature decides to make the necessary changes. The MSBA one wants a Blue Ribbon Commission, which is, quite frankly, the classic way of dumping something for three or four years and not having it considered. So that was probably the major change. In either case, it's ultimately going to be the legislature that makes the decision. It just tries to shorten the process and, and get it to the legislature quick. Legislature quicker. Okay, thank you. Okay, anybody else? All those in favor? All those opposed? Okay. Um, um, could I have just a, a clarification? Um, no. You asked. Because they're slightly inconsistent, I would like um, I, I thought I phrased my motion this way, but it's already popped out of my head. That since they are slightly inconsistent, I would like to support. I would like to support first the single-page one, and if that fails, to then support the MSBA one. Is that clear? And I, I would make a motion to, to authorize me to do it in that order. I, th I think that's fine. I don't think we need a separate motion. Okay. 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 Uh, num item eight is committee reports. Does anybody have anything they'd like to report? Um, I would just like to let folks know that the next HR committee will be held on November 9th. At that committee meeting, we're going to start discussions on the teacher evaluation as well as complete all of the co-curricular um, job descriptions. Um, they are putting together all of the revisions for all of those job descriptions so that they can be presented at our November business meeting for um, approval. So I just wanted to give everybody the heads up that you will be receiving a large book of job descriptions for the next meeting. Mary? And let's give it to Rebecca Fair away warned. ahead of time. So Fair warned. <laughs> Um, I'd like to um, thank all of the teachers and administrators um, from the high school and middle school who have attended the school board coffees thus far. We have one more to go um, at uh, Pond Cove. That will be next Tuesday, October 19th at 7.30 um, in the lobby of Pond Cove. Isn't that what we decided, Tom, versus the cafeteria? Yep. Yep. Okay. So we'll look forward to seeing um, the teachers from Pond Cove there and anyone who can make it from the board. Was that yes, in the lobby? Yes. In the lobby, yes. Okay, public comment on non-agenda items. None. School board agenda requests. Okay, announcement of upcoming meetings. Um, Linda, we have down here policy committee Thursday, October 21st at 7 a.m. Is that definite? Correct, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, and there are other, any other meetings that are posted on the website. May I motion? Actually, ahead. can I just mention the uh, health and wellness meet is meeting tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock at the um, fire station. I'll buy you coffee if you'd like to come. <laughs> Jeff, Tom, <laughs> Steve. And breakfast. And bre I'll bring breakfast and coffee. Janet, 
bagels and coffee if anyone would like to come. I'll come. <laughs> Seven, okay. you said? Seven. It's <laughs> on my way to work. Okay. All, all are invited. You know, it might be also important to know because I asked before we started the, the SAC, is that right? Yeah. Meeting that was scheduled for tomorrow morning at 7.15. Is if people were planning to go, that isn't going to be held during the day later on. So what, that people. What time? Know that. What time has it been held? Oh, we have a modified schedule tomorrow. I think it's G period. The G SAP. period tomorrow. I think it's about 1:30. 15. Could be wrong. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. One four. One four. Thank you. And where is that located? Not sure. Okay. <laughs> well, if anybody would like to attend the meeting, feel free to email Jeff uh, <laughs> tomorrow to get the location. Now that we have the time, do you have a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Thank you, everyone.